grade hello grade 12 just a revision of that last lesson that we had uh, question 1.1 1 .1 of the trial paper this is the p question paper here we are going to finish our program this program the email address password must be um, entered but already there are default um, text there there's default entries there as you can see you don't have to type it in just to help along what we're going to do is declare variables and extract the input so we must get the name email age and grade so we have to decide um, in class we decided it's not the same as the video that I made for the lesson in the actual class we decided to make the grade 8 a string and grade 9 and 10 11 and 12 as strings will be easier to take them out and then these two input uh, items, the edits here, we'll make strings for those. So we'll have a string to hold the grade, an integer for the age. So I'll take that one out there. Oh no, my computer mustn't go and do that now. All right. Okay, S grade string. Okay. And instead of having a case for the radio um, group box. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say S grade equals RGP grade dot items square brackets RGP grade dot item index and that will give you the string value of each of those radio group boxes, the whole word grade 8. So you have to be careful when you you know how you're going to use it because if you want if you need the item index it's a different story but decided we can it doesn't we can use it both ways in this particular activity but sometimes you need the item index just be aware of that and sometimes you need the value only right so we get an integer for the age we got that so we've got the age email address password etc and then we've got the grade now we have to write code to test if the email address must contain an A. So there's a lot of items here that need to be tested. We need to test that the email address has got an at symbol, not an A. The password has to be tested. The grade has to be tested. So there's one, two, three things that we need to test. Three items for testing. So I'm going to declare three Boolean flags, we call them, or Boolean variables. And I'm just going to call them B1, B2, and B3. You can call them anything you want. And we're going to set them to false before we allocate values to them. Always got to initialize them, in other words. It's important to initialize your Boolean variables. Make sure you do that. Right, the first one is the email address. So if pause of the at sign in S email is greater than naught, then the Boolean flag will be true. Then B1 equals true. We don't need an else part because we set B, um, sorry, I'm round bracket there. B1 is set to false, so we don't have to say else B1 is false, okay? Because if it if that is if this statement happens, then B1 will be true. So we've got B1 sorted. Next one is B2. So let's go and say B2 equals false. You'll find this is an easier method than the one that was described in the video for this question. 8th of June. Right, the second uh, section is the, the password. The password must have eight or more characters. One or more character must be a capital letter, and two or more characters must be a number from 0 to 9. So I'm going to count how many capital letters there are and count how many numbers there are. I'm going to first do that. That's a difficult part. So I'm going to have R count caps, R count num, count integer. I'm going to set them to 0, because all counters must always be set to 0 before we use them and totaling variables set to naught before we use them. Then I've got to use a for loop and go from 1 to the length of 
the whole thing. The string of the password string for k equals one to length of s pass do begin and end. If s pass character number k <clears throat> so there must be capitals, okay? So if there's a capital letter, so we're going to say if s pass uh, in, if it's in the set of the capital letters dot dot z, if that character is in the set from a to z, then we will increment our count caps. And inside this loop, we'll do the other test as well. We'll say if s pass character number k is in which set are we worrying about? 0 to 9. So you can use the values here, but you must remember it's going to be a naught in a semicolon, a quoted naught. In other words, a naught that is in the form of a character. Then we'll increment our count number. And why must it be a naught to 9 in the form of characters? Because we're dealing with the string, s pass, the password string. So in this loop, we are counting number caps and counting number of numbers, and then we can go and have our if statement here for setting b2. So if length of s pass, because we have to worry about that one also before we can set b2 to true, must consist of eight or more characters. If its length of pass is greater than or equal to eight, so that's the one condition, And so all of these have to be true, and our count caps must be greater than or equal to what number? One or more. And our count num must be greater than or equal to two, I think. Let's have a look. Two or more, yes. Then we can say b2 equals true. <coughs> okay, so there we have it. So we've, we've set b2 false, and then we did our calculations, and then we go and check the three things, but we have to add this as well, our count caps and so on. Right, so b2. So if b2 is false, it will stay false, but if all of these are true, then it will be set to true. We don't have to say else b2 is false. If you did, it wouldn't be wrong. So the next test is going to be um, the grade. Grade 10, 11, and 12. We're older than 15. Oh, we've got to do the age as well. Hey. So we'll do a couple of conditions there. We'll say if s grade, now we're going to do a whole lot of things now. If s grade is equal to 10, grade 10, and now we have to quote that whole string from this, and it must be spelled correctly and so on. Capital letters and space in the right place. That's the only trick there. So, either way, whether you use an item index or the items dot item index, if s grade is equal to grade 10, or S grade is equal to grade 11 or S grade equal to grade 12 and take note if you don't put the spaces in there it's not going to uh, make a match not going to have, be a match but now we also have to have an AND why? Because we have to worry about the age. They have to be in either 10, 11 or 12 and they have to be older than 15 years. So great. Um, so our age must be and our age is greater than 15 then. But there's something wrong with this because these three are one condition and then the AND is another condition. So these three have to be wrapped up 
in their own bracket you've got to put all three in one container like that see and then we have and and then the second container is here then you can say b3 equals true so that's that one sorted now if all the conditions are met then we're going to enable the panel otherwise we'll disable that panel if one of the above if just one is not met so b1 must be true and b3 must be true and b4 must be true so if b1 and b2 and b3 you can say that that is still valid because boolean variables you can but if you want to do it the long way, if b1 equals true, so this that was just another way of saying, if you just say if b2, then it means what your what the processor reads it as if b2 equals true. But if you prefer, which I always like to do the long way, sometimes I like to do do it the long way. I don't know, just I'm just fussy that way. So I will put the equal to true there. So that AND means every single one must be thing. If just one, if one is not met, if all of them are met, then we'll able, if just one is not met, then this, if one of these is false, this AND statement means that everything has to be true in order for the, the panel to be enabled. Okay, so that was question 1.1. So I hope you, now we can, and, and tomorrow we'll go on to question 1.2.